More than 10,000 asylum seekers at the southern border have been sent back under the controversial Remain in Mexico policy as their asylum cases are processed in American immigration courts. And we've learned the Trump administration wants to expand this practice. Typically, refugee status is not granted just based on uh, economic need or uh, because a family lives in a bad neighborhood or poverty. CNN seems to incorrectly think that Donald Trump is the president of Mexico, Guatemala, and El Salvador. And he was elected in large part to deal with the massive illegal immigration problem at the southern border. He's actually had a lot of success, something that CNN is clearly pissed about. That's thanks to him convincing Mexico to hold these large caravans of people on the Mexican side of the border, up until their so-called asylum cases can be heard. However, as we know from the Obama administration, the vast the vast majority of these people are economic migrants. They're not asylum cases. Typically, refugee status is not granted just based on uh, economic need or uh, because a family lives in a bad neighborhood or poverty. Don't get me wrong, I do feel bad for these people, but if they want to come here, they got to come legally. While you and I and millions of Americans may see this as a success, CNN doesn't think so, and they are apparently upset that there aren't millions of people just streaming across the border unchecked. They seem to be very supportive of open borders, something that they have claimed over and over again that Democrats aren't supportive of. They seem to be very supportive of open borders, something that they have claimed over and over again that Democrats aren't supportive of. We'll get right back to this media meltdown in just a second, but let me take a quick moment to thank this channel's new sponsor PatriotLegacy.com. Patriot Legacy was nice enough to send me over one of these units to test out and give you an honest review of. This survival slash tactical flashlight has a lot of neat features, most prominent the solar charging panel, which will actually charge using normal light. It's got some really handy survival tools as well, like this razor blade, which can be used to cut off your seatbelt if you're stuck in your car, as well as other materials if you needed to in a survival situation. You might have also noticed this little guy here, which is used to break out your windshield or car window in the event that you're stuck. And I imagine it would be pretty useful for a defensive weapon if you needed it. It's also got an array of six flashing light options that are really useful if you are in a car accident or just stuck on the side of the road or possibly even lost in the woods. People are gonna see these lights when they're flashing. And then of course we have the main function of the flashlight, which I can assure you is extremely bright, 500 lumens to be exact. They also have this compass that is removable. And if you take off the compass, underneath you have a speaker, which is extremely loud. Say you're in a dark parking lot and somebody attacks you or you think somebody's going to attack you, you hit that alarm and anybody in the area is going to hear it. You see under this cover you have a couple options. Either you can charge other devices off the flashlight or you can plug in the flashlight through USB and charge it. In conclusion, I love this tactical flashlight. It's got everything you would ever need. Six overall lighting functions, escape features like the window hammer and the seatbelt cutter, solar charging so you don't need batteries, a power bank for charging your phone and other devices, and a removable compass with access to a personal safety alarm. Patriot Legacy supports veterans and YouTubers like yours truly. So head on over there and make sure to use the promo code DRONE20 to get 20% off your purchase. Thank you. All right, President Trump insists things are better along the U.S. border with Mexico, but in reality, the humanitarian crisis is getting significantly worse. Nick Valencia got a firsthand look at conditions in one makeshift tent camp. I just want to quickly point out the obvious emotion and opinion this so-called reporter is already injecting into the story. It's what's called an appeal to emotion, and it's a logical fallacy. It's most certainly something that you wouldn't see with a professional journalist, but rather a propagandist or an activist. And for people who constantly tout that nobody is above the law, they certainly are very selective about how they'll apply those standards. This reaction from CNN is kind of baffling, especially considering that Obama took the very same stance about asylum cases and openly said that if you don't meet these criteria, you shouldn't come here. Some Republicans have suggested there's an open border policy or the president hasn't been tough enough. Listen to these tough words here. 
Our message absolutely is don't send your children. So that is our direct message to the families in Central America. Do not send your children to the borders. If they do make it, they'll get sent back. It was never a controversy or a scandal. It's part of the Trump administration's migrant protection protocols, a policy which now requires migrants like her to remain in Mexico for their asylum cases to be called on if they cross illegally or without proper documentation. Great. What's wrong with that? If she's a real asylum case, then she's going to end up getting preferential treatment over immigrants who are trying to come into the country legally. Remember, nobody is above the law. No one is above the law. Nobody is above the law. We must ensure that no one is above the law. No one is above the law. This is as a result of U.S. policy. Yes. ACLU of Texas staff attorney Rochelle Garza says the migrants are being denied due process. She says their fate is being decided in an unprecedented way in makeshift tent courts. Wrong. These people made the choice to illegally enter the United States and they can make the choice to go back home. The U.S. is under no obligation to accept a never-ending stream of economic migrants. We can't even take care of our own poor and veterans, much less millions of poor from other countries. We had an election, and as you all like to remind us during the Obama administration, elections have consequences. He was elected to do something about this problem, and he's doing it. Nobody elected CNN or left-wing extremists to dictate our immigration policy. Again, and I want to keep reminding you of this, the vast majority of these people are not asylum cases. They come from poor, bad neighborhoods, yes, but that's not the criteria for asylum. Typically, refugee status is not granted just based on... Uh economic need or uh, because a family lives in a bad neighborhood or poverty. ACLU of Texas staff attorney Rochelle Garza says the migrants are being denied due process. You hear the president say that things have gotten better on the border and then we walk through scenes like this. It's gotten better because they feel like they've gotten rid of the problem. This is entirely our fault. Sure, yeah, okay, let's interview this left-wing activist who's gonna spew a bunch of unchecked political rhetoric. What they just said there doesn't even make sense. If their cases are being heard, then they're getting their due process. It doesn't matter if the court's in an office building or in a tent. Where would these people be if they weren't in that tent city right now? They would be in detention centers, and no doubt CNN and left-wing activists would be outraged about that too. They just want us to let all of these people in unconditionally. The only thing that would make these people happy is to just open the borders. Thanks for watching. This channel is under constant assault by YouTube and almost nothing is monetized. So I depend on my donors and sponsors to keep this channel going. If you enjoy my content and you want to support this channel, please consider subscribing to me on Patreon or Subscribestar. I also accept donations on PayPal and I deeply appreciate it. Thank you for all the support that I've gotten from all of you and keep coming back.